third thing we notice about Jesus, to whom is the glory, is in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them. So he, sent, so he assembles, he arranges, he prays, and he comes. He comes means he approaches. He gets very close. Jesus comes really close at times of difficulty. In the midst of intense, fierce tribulation, when you're at the breaking point, then Jesus moves in close, super close to us. And then what do we do? We believe him to be a ghost. You see what happens when in distress? In distress, we always say, is this from God or not? Does he have a role in this or not? Did he forget me or remember me? Is that him or not? We even doubt when we come to a moment of solace. When we feel God coming close to us, we say, no, that's not him. I'm just fooling myself. We doubt even when Jesus comes close. So he came close and they believed he was a ghost and cried out. Here, Jesus said something really important. He said, don't be afraid. He encourages. So Jesus, to whom, is, to whom is the glory, he assembles, he prays, he comes close, and he encourages. All of that is what we didn't want. As human beings, all we want is for the tribulation to go away. That's what we're waiting for. For him to just make it go away already. For him to solve the problem and save us. No, sorry, not yet. It's not time for that. He comes and encourages. It is I. Do not be afraid. Certainly we get irritated because as, as weak human beings, we don't want Jesus to encourage us. We want him to solve the problem and be done with it. But from his perspective, that's not, that's not what's needed. There would be a lot of benefits lost if he did that. So he encourages us saying, it is I. Meaning, it is God. I am God. So don't be afraid. I know what I'm doing. You doubt and say, is it possible that this tribulation can have any benefit? I am God. I gauge everything correctly. Do not be afraid. Then Peter comes along and makes a request that's really naive and without conscious thought. However, Jesus really liked the request. The secret request that was in the hearts of the, all the disciples was, calm the storm. Jesus didn't answer that one. However, the request that Peter jumped up with was, well, can I come then, walking on the water? Jesus told him, come. Jesus, to whom the is the glory, wants to bring us to something really strange. He wants to lift us above the tribulation. He doesn't want to lift the tribulation, but wants to elevate us above the tribulation. The tribulation is not going away. The waves are high. The wind is intense. They're drowning and dying. But Peter is doing what? He's walking above the water, above the high waves. It's a hugely intense problem and a difficult tribulation, and Jesus wants to raise us above the waves. Let's imagine the scene together for a moment so we can really feel it. Jesus is going up and down because the waves are high, several me meters maybe. And as soon as Peter stepped out onto the water, he began to go up and down. And Jesus, to whom is the glory, is delighted with this. In the beginning, Peter hadn't really taken it in. But as soon as he starts thinking in the manner that humans think, saying to himself, there's no way I could ever walk on the, above the sea. Then he began to sink. So Jesus grabbed him by the hand and told him, no, don't drown. Impossible. You'll never drown. The one thing that God will never do to you is let you drown. That's not in the plan at all. You're thinking the whole tribulation will kill you. But in reality, this is the one thing that Jesus could never allow. You're not going to drown. See, Jesus grabs him. Even if Peter hurt himself, take note here that Peter hurt himself. He was, he was going to drown himself because he's the one that stepped out into the sea. He doubted. Jesus said, no, you're not going to drown. I'm not going to leave you to drown. And he brought him into the boat. And as soon as they entered the boat, what happened? It was over. The sea calmed down and the wind was calm and everything was solved. So, of course, the disciples then worshipped him and said, you are the son of God. Whoever didn't say that after distributing the loaves, they said it now. So what's the deal with all of this? When the Lord allows a tribulation to happen, the Lord is the one behind the tribulation. Let, n let no none of you doubt it. He made them get into the boat. He said, this is a must. He's saying right now, you need to get sick. Lord, why? Keep the evil away. No, it's not evil. You have to get sick now. It's necessary. You negotiate with him. 
but he compels you saying, it's all right. You have to confront this problem or this tribulation. Fine, Lord. Why are you being tough on me? Don't you feel my pain? I feel it. Have no doubt. In all your afflictions, I am afflicted. I can't sleep so long as you are in distress. Here the meaning of the cross becomes clear. Jesus was on the mountain, which reminds us of Moses when he was raising his hands and the people were in tribulation down below fighting in the battle while Moses was raising his hands. As soon as he got drowsy and his arms lowered, his people started losing the battle. So Jesus will not lower his hands. Meaning what? In tribulation, rest assured that Jesus is being crucified. It's impossible that he'd lower his hands. It's impossible he'd leave you alone. Because he's crucified. He's nailed. And his prayers will protect you. His intercession protects you during tribulation. So it's impossible that his hands descend. So he's not going to stop prayer. It's impossible that he'd go to sleep. So long as you are tired and distressed, it's not going to happen. The third thing is Jesus approaches very close to us during tribulation, but nobody knows it, notices. In tribulation, we see Jesus with our own eyes and believe he's a ghost, unfortunately. Meaning what? Many people, when they are squeezed during trials and tribulations, they say they saw Jesus, but at the time they were thinking he's a ghost. Meaning, as tribulations become really intense, you'll feel Jesus coming really close and you'll see him, but due to our faith being weak, we imagine that he's not real. After that, Jesus will encourage and he'll tell you, don't be afraid. I don't want you to be scared. That's the target, that you don't fear. God doesn't ever accept fear in his children. When you are terrified, he tells you, don't be afraid. And you have to rise above the tribulation. Jesus is waiting until the fourth watch. Not so the sea can calm, can get calm. It could have become calm, calm from the first minute. But because there's something we don't understand that he wants to bring us to understand, which is he wants us to walk over the tribulations. He wants our eyes to be fixed on him while the waves go up and down between us. But our eyes don't see anything except him. As soon as we look at the waves, we sink. Our problem is that during tribulations, we focus on the waves. We look at the waves and sink quickly and get depressed and fall apart. But if we can focus on him right away, we will walk over the tribulation. It will be a miracle in your life. You'll pass through the toughest of times that take you up and down and you'll be stable and elevated and not drowning but under one circumstance that you keep your eyes fixed on his eyes as soon as your eyes drop down to the world or to the sea you drown 